look at us, we're, we're matching red. We are, we are ready to go. <laughs> there it's Kristen and today we're chatting with Joey King and Joey Courtney about the final chapter in the Kissing Booth Netflix's The Kissing Booth 3. Now Joey this is the last installment of the Kissing Booth series how does that feel? It's emotional you know I've, I've spent a lot of my very pivotal years playing L. Evans and so saying goodbye to this character and these movies in general it's just like it's really sad but it's also I really love where we left it and I've had such a great time doing these movies. Definitely bittersweet. There's uh, there's so much nostalgia. There's so many like fun memories that go even back to when was that? Was that 2017 when we did the first movie? Um, like it's just been it's just been such a collection of wonderful, wonderful memories. Um, and then also just the excitement. Like I'm so excited for the third movie. I can't wait for people to watch it. I know that people are going to love it. It is my favorite personally. Um, not that I'm biased or anything, but um, yeah, it's just, there's, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot of emotions. It's all the emotions. Look what you guys are having such a blast. You have so many fun adventures with this new beach list. What were some of your favorite moments to film? One of my favorite beach bucket list moments was uh, uh, the Sunday on Jacob. Um, I felt bad about that one in hindsight because it took him forever to like shower and like clean everything off. We really got him good. Um, oh, one that I wanted to do, but they wouldn't let us well skydiving, but also, um, the, uh, the cliff jumping. Oh man, that one looked so fun. Uh, they did that actually. I want to say like somewhere in South, South America, like, like they had these stunt doubles jump off of this huge cliff. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they wouldn't let us do that one. So many moments were my favorite film. I, I can't even begin to like narrow it down, but so much of the bucket list montage just cracks me up. Any scene with Joel, I'm just guaranteed just laughing all day pretty much. Elle has really been torn between Noah and Lee but maybe it's time to put herself first. What, what can you tell us about that? I think that Ella went through a very important growth period of, of, you know, learning that it's okay to make decisions for yourself sometimes. And it's not selfish. It's really important. And so uh, going through that journey with her was really special because I feel like I kind of came to the same conclusion about my own life at the same time as Elle. Lee is having a kind of a hard time with that idea of change um, in this last installment. Have you ever felt that way? And how did you kind of get through that and bring that into this character? Absolutely. Change is not fun um, for me. I don't do well with change. I like a good rhythm, routine. Um, it's one of those things that like I can very easily like connect with my character on. Uh, and we definitely have that in common. So I get where he's coming from. Uh, I think that Lee has a hard time with change for sure. Uh, just like accepting like what has been is in the past and that there is something new happening and will continue to unfold and kind of just like hanging in there, playing along, just seeing how it goes and like, also self-discovery through that is um is always tough for us to do and um i think that he learns his lessons as usual and uh comes out the other side better for it i remember going to college and being freaking out like that's the time you know when you're like oh, what is happening how everything's changing i don't i don't know what's yeah, gonna happen absolutely. Next. yeah you're suddenly like a senior in high school and then you are the little fish in a big pond freshman in college and it's like totally different um so you like to hold on to as much as you can so that you have a sense of normalcy and like I totally I totally get that but um sometimes life is just like you know what we're just gonna change everything and you go upside down that's just what it is <laughs> the kissing booth marked your first foray into producing did you learn a lot kind of balancing both sides of that? And do you plan to produce more or maybe even get into like writing or directing in the future? I definitely plan to produce more. I actually have produced a, a few things more too that are going to be coming out soon. Um, but it was really special to be able to be so hands-on with movies that I care so much about. And that had such a, an important part of my life and, and part of my 
teen years and twenties. And so um, being more hands-on, being having more input in movies that I feel like I'm the demographic audience for is, is really exciting. One other thing I wanted to bring up was just that idea of legacy. You know, I, I love that looking back now, the kids at that school are still doing the kissing booth. Yeah. Uh, do you think that there's potential to, you know, come back down the line um, and maybe, you know, have you guys return in some way to help out with a new, a new story? Maybe. I mean, there could be. I'm, I'm not one to ever say never. Who phrased that best? Oh, yeah, that's right. Never say never. Um, but <laughs> Justin Bieber. But yeah, I don't I don't I don't know if that'll if that'll ever come full circle. Um, that'd be fun. That'd be fun. I'll leave it there. That would be fun. I'm not going to say no to anything. I mean, I don't like to look too far in the future because you just never know what's going to happen. So if someone says in like 10, 20 years, hey, you want to play 11s again? Maybe I'll be open to it. Maybe I will, but I don't want to say no. If you like this one, you can check out more of my interviews right over here and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.